This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. The inevitable happened yesterday morning, at least according to the Chinese Communist Party in Beijing, who you can't trust one bit. And when the CCP state officials remarked that they are nearing a memo of understanding with Afghanistan. Well, I should correct my first statement. China first stated that they had signed an MOU with the Taliban government, and then they pulled back slightly to state that an agreement was being worked on with a medieval death cult that is now promising to follow the UN and World Economic Forum Agenda 2030 initiatives. (laughs) Yes, by the way, Klaus Schwab, the Taliban are lying to you. Same goes for you, Biden administration. And of course, the Biden administration only really cares about perception anyway. But there are few that doubt that China is on its way into China. That goes without saying, now that the U.S. forces are out. So I want to have a discussion with you this morning where we put the personal anguish and grief aside and start to look big picture about China's goals in Afghanistan, as well as China's goals worldwide. And just as the Biden family is personally aware of, China normally doesn't do business in international politics via military intervention. They do business by dropping millions and even billions of dollars in foreign governments' laps to get their way. And let me give you a brief understanding of the Belt and Road Initiative. And please stay tuned to Sovereign Nations because I'll be giving a full one and a half hour explainer on the Belt and Road Initiative on the causes of things in the coming weeks. Now, when I first heard of the Belt and Road Initiative back in 2009, it was referred to as the New Silk Road or the Silk Road Project. My team and I were brought into the project to bid on logistical support for several Asian business partners that would be helping to facilitate this new project of the Chinese Communist Party. Now, there are many other partners, many other nations, many other NGOs, many other global corporations who are along for the ride of this project, which in simple terms goes like this. China comes into an impoverished country and looks at the dilapidated water systems, looks at the lack of sewage systems, the absence of advanced roadways, the lack of renewable energy sources, and also looks at what is likely to be a rundown, barely functioning airport. They also see that there's a lack of 5G technology, a problem with not enough people with smartphones, and a lack of digital commerce, you know, the wave of the future. Because remember, we are being transitioned from an analog physical world into a digital metaphysical world. And this is what China has done well all over the world. And so what China says to a third world or second world country is this. We will replace all that is broken and build all that is not here in just a few short years. We will bankroll all of it. We will also supply all of the workers, all of the materials, everything, all the plans as long as we get mineral rights, and especially if we get the data, all of that precious data. And digital data is the 2021 version of oil. As China builds in their own Internet of Things in all of their Belt Road Initiative partners. And you don't have to pay us back now, by the way. But we can work on that in the future. But until then, we will help you in every possible way to become a first world country. Oh, and by the way, our people are going to want to come here to do business as well. So expect many Chinese communities. And what you call this is debt diplomacy. China comes in and changes the entire outlook and framework of your nation. But you're on the hook, and you'd better do what they say. And you know what? China really doesn't care that you pay them back anyway. And they will keep building more stuff and making improvements on their old stuff down the years. And the bill will keep on growing and growing, and you'll never be able to pay them back. 
debt diplomacy. In other words, neo-colonization. They are the colonizers. And if you thought that the Taliban had morals and scruples, by the way, you know, the thing is, the Taliban, they know what China is doing with the Muslim population in China just over the border. They are very aware. But they just want the cash and the roads and the power plants and the new 5G and the protection. The Taliban will sell their souls to the Chinese. And you know what China just did yesterday to really kick the United States right in the groin? Well, let me read for you an article that's just fresh off the press at Breitbart News. China's state-run Global Times on Tuesday insisted that the United States should accept more refugees from Afghanistan while calling it a fantasy for the civilized world to expect China to welcome any refugees itself. The Global Times whined that America still dares to criticize China and Russia for their human rights abuses and lack of charity, taking particular umbrage to a tweet that pointed out Beijing is accepting no refugees despite constantly posturing as the rising global superpower. In a Twitter post, U.S. political scientist Ian Bremmer touted that Almost 100 governments have pledged support in facilitating the free travel of Afghans that have worked with them or that are considered to be at risk. By the way, not participating, China and Russia. What he referred to was a statement signed on August 29th by the U.S. and 97 other countries, which pledged to ensure Afghans to travel freely to destinations outside of Afghanistan and issued travel documents to designated Afghans. Now, of course, this process is, com- no, it's not even close to perfect. It's actually a mess. But anyway, the China Global Times then said this in response. Compared to the chaos and misery the U.S. has brought to Afghanistan and its people, facilitating the free travel Afghans is the least the U.S. should do, rather than something that is worth touting about. While the U.S. ensures Afghans to travel freely to other countries, the number of Afghan refugees the U.S. has received is only a drop in the ocean. End quote. The Global Times admitted that drop in the ocean represents at least 50,000 Afghan refugees coming into the United States, but hectored the U.S. to take in five times more unfavorably comparing U.S. resettlement of Afghan refugees to the estimated 2.6 million living in Pakistan and Iran. Well, the Communist Chinese paper continues and says this, quote, The U.S. has all the reasons to accept the most Afghan refugees, as it is the culprit of the Afghan war. But even if the U.S. accepts Afghan refugees, it cannot make up for the suffering of the Afghan people, let alone what the U.S. is actually willing to do is very limited, end quote. So the Global Times was outraged at the notion that China, which is salivating over the huge profits it plans to take in from Afghanistan's mineral resources, should do anything to help people fleeing for their lives from Beijing's Taliban business partners. Quote again from the Global Times of China. Quote, asking China and Russia to clean the mess created by the U.S. and Afghanistan is beyond ridiculous. How could U.S. elites have the nerve to raise it up? Russia said it will render civil aviation services for the evacuation of Afghan nationals seeking asylum elsewhere. China has also called on all sides to guide the Taliban actively and try to engage in the reconstruction of Afghanistan. Aren't these responsible responses? Now think about it for a second here. They're talking about the reconstruction of Afghanistan which is something that the U.S. has been doing for 20 years, while they are seeking the deconstruction of the United States of America. Now, they go on to say this again, and I quote again from the Chinese-controlled global state media. Quote, The U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan has become the laughing stock of the world, but it seems that the U.S. and its elite think it had done something noble. The U.S. elites tend to assume all countries should follow the U.S. lead or even make up for U.S. mistakes. But they ignore the fact that there are other countries which have made contributions in their own way. Years of wars the U.S. waged in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan have generated huge numbers of refugees. 
By the way, China engages with other countries by promoting win-win principles and through infrastructure building for the welfare of local people. We'll never create refugees. Ugh. That is just awful to read. Pure propaganda. But here is what the Chinese are doing. They are demanding that the U.S. depopulate Afghanistan while they come in and basically buy it out. They buy out what you, the U.S. taxpayer, have built with your tax dollars over the past 20 years. While the Chinese Communist Party takes over the reins, the airports, the entire Afghan economy, and all of the data. And remember what the U.S. military just left behind. All of the biometric data from every Afghan man, woman, and child. And biometric data of those who just left Afghanistan. They will have all of the data that the U.S. took over a decade to collect. So now you have a nation that is on its knees before the Chinese, who now can spy into all of everyone's business for 24 hours a day. And they will kick the United States in the tail as the U.S. leaves. Now let's remember a couple of other things. Remember that the U.S. dollar is based upon the, quote, full faith and credit of the United States of America, end quote. And during the Trump administration, there was quite a bit of muscle backing up faith and credit. Well, how do you think that faith and credit is now, after this embarrassing, chaotic, bungling departure from Afghanistan? What are all of our other partners, especially Japan and Australia, what do they really think of that full faith and credit now? Well, I'll tell you what. They know that it means nothing. It means nothing now. Because, because who we have in the White House, in Congress, and in our military under the Democrats are trying to purposely diminish the United States. They will purposely fracture the nation. They are trying to deconstruct America. And it won't just be our partner nations that can't count on us. Even our citizens won't be able to count on America. And the U.S. dollar will go into a free fall. Massive debt. Universal basic income. Money being thrown around like a redneck from Yeehaw Junction, Florida, who just won the lottery. And nations will need another currency. And so, the IMF and China will be there to help. And what about the United States? Well... We will likely be the Weimar Republic in a few years. And then the saviors will come riding in to help us with a different system. And since you can't pay your mortgage, and you don't have a job, and since food is going to be scarce, and since you can't even afford to buy a roast chicken at Publix anymore, well, you can have a chicken in every pot. And we can digitize a new currency. And we need to get rid of that old constitution anyway. And meanwhile, what will be happening with China? They will be soaring and strengthening and building and taking over more and more nations. And what about the EU and Europe? Oh, they will be doing the same thing, Great Reset style. But China will be the dominant superpower in the world. It will be, as I was told 10 years ago, the Asian century, with China in the lead with a neo-colonized Afghanistan and Africa and Middle East and with a dismantled America. If we let them. I'm Michael O'Fallon and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. <laughs>